Hey everybody, so today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about good design for 3D printing using emojis. So, there are a few fundamental rules to 3D printing if you're making a 3D printed product. Uh, this one right here is actually a trailer hitch cover. So you can plug this into the slot that your, your ball hitch would normally go to in uh, a truck or a, an SUV or something like that. But anyway, there's a few basic rules. Number one, always fillet everything. Round out the edges of any part you possibly can, as much as you possibly can. Fillets do a number of things. Number one, they create very efficient tool paths. So if a part is being printed like this, rather than going to a corner and then moving 90 degrees off in the opposite direction at the corner, it's able to round out that motion. So the tool head is able to move much more smoothly and it makes a much more dimensionally accurate and much more reliable part. Because with sharp corners, the head hits that sharp corner, stops suddenly and goes the opposite direction, which creates a little bit of vibration right there at the end. So you want to fill it everything. If you're not in plane, if you're not printing this direction, if you're printing like this, you want to fill it everything because this gradient creates something that makes the top uh, surfaces merge much more cleanly. Again, if it's perfect 90 degrees, then you end up with layers hitting vertical layers right there and there's no merging of it at all. By rounding it right here, you create these stair steps that allow the sides to merge into the top very smoothly, which again creates a much more structurally reliable part and also just looks a little bit better. They don't have to be enormous uh, fillets like this one right here, but they do have to be present. Um, but filleting creates more efficient tool paths, it strengthens the part, and it makes the part print faster because you no longer have that extra surface area. Extending from this, rule number two, make parts as fat and round as you possibly can. Do not try to remove material from a 3D printed part. There is no reason for this. Proviso right here, asterisk. This only applies to FDM 3D printing. So if you are creating a part, you want to make it thick and fat. The reason for this is that the majority of material and print time goes into the surface area of a part. And if you try to take out a cavity or something or put ribs on it, you're increasing the surface area of the part as opposed to just a standard cube or brick. So always fill everything and then always round it out because the closer you can get to a sphere, the more efficient you are with surface area. So in this case, you can see that it's very chunky, it's very blocky, it's very simple. Don't get fancy with design features because they really do not help. And structurally, for, again, from an engineering standpoint, most of the strength of any part is in the outer edges. Think of an I-beam. You've got the top right there, the bottom right there, and the spine in between. All the strength is carried by those top and bottom flanges that are able to take the compressive and the uh, tension forces and apply them in the most effective area of the part. That's why the I-beam is the most effective structural member for the amount of material it uses. Same applies for 3D printing. All the strength is out here, out here, out here, and right here. And the inside is just a honeycomb so that it acts like a composite. Rule number two, overhangs. Either chamfer or fillet overhangs if you can. So, this thumb. This is what's considered an overhang. Anything that hovers over the horizontal right here. So you've got the build plate right here. This is sticking out into thin air. This part is well designed because that thumb gradually moves from the vertical right here at the bottom over to the horizontal, which means that there's no need to support it underneath. If this thumb st stuck perfectly straight out to where it went right here and then went sideways, then we would have to put support material underneath it in order to support it as it shoots straight out into thin air. So whenever you're doing overhangs, you want to make them gradual. If you have a lip somewhere in your part, try to put a fillet, fillet or a chamfer underneath it. Again, this goes back to rule one. If you followed rule one, this isn't even an issue. But if you have some kind of overhang, try to have it gradually stair step up into it. That way you can eliminate support material and additional post-processing in the part. Lastly, colors. If you're making a production 3D printed part, there are a few colors to avoid. The number one ones are white, yellow, and then light blue, and then on down from there. The reason these colors 
are not preferable, like this yellow, is for an example right here. You see that? That is a small burn stain. Uh, when doing production parts, we're producing thousands of parts, and a small amount of burnt plastic and residue starts to build up on the nozzle, which occasionally falls down onto the part, which happened in this case. A slight bit of warping happened there, and then the nozzle wiped itself off on it. Since this is such a light color, this is a defective part that cannot be shipped, or it has to be painted, or some other means of post-processing if we use it at all. Using light colors introduces a much higher failure rate, especially with white. The first layer going down can have some stain or defect on it, or somewhere throughout the part, some small discoloration can appear that generally wouldn't be noticeable, especially if it was like in black or a darker color, so that it wouldn't be an issue at all. But when it's on the light colors, it's a big issue. So it is something to be aware of. If you can design with darker tones, try to design with darker tones. If you need lighter tones, they're more expensive to produce because more of them are potentially scrapped and recycled uh, as compared to just produced and thrown straight into a box. So those are the design rules. Hopefully you got a little bit of help and a few tips on how to design your 3D printed parts a little bit better. Go ahead and reach out to us and comment down below with any sort of topics that you'd love to hear. Have a great day, everybody.